Hi, this video is um, designed to help you to know how to do MLA format. So I'm going to actually show you a paper that I myself wrote using MLA format. Um, I have a few things highlighted in blue, as you can see here. Um, I don't want you to highlight anything in your paper blue, but this is just to help me to remember what I need to cover. So with MLA formatting, a couple things right off the bat. On your first page, you're going to include this heading with your name, the teacher's name, the class, and the date with the day, month, and then the year. And this is just the standard heading that you use on the top of M every MLA paper. A couple of other standard things are you want to have one inch margins, um, you want to have your title centered, um, you don't have to do anything special with the font, just centered in the middle. And then you want to make sure you have your last name and a page number on each page. And you'll notice that this is actually a separate header. I've inserted a header and that makes the formatting a lot easier especially if you're using Word. Um, you might also notice that here in the title, I have this in quote, quotes and I have this in italics. And the reason is why, the reason why that is, is because I'm referencing um, a short story that's part of a larger work, so it's in quotation marks, and I'm also referencing a book, and that's in italics. And so whenever you're, you're using the title of a book, you want to put that in italics. If you're going to mention an article or a short story or a poem or something, you're going to put that in quotation marks. So those are some basic things about MLA formatting just for the beginning of your paper. Let's get into some of the nitty gritty of in-text citations. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can tell that I've included a picture in this paper. And you're welcome to include pictures or tables or graphs in your paper as well if it helps uh, illustrate part of your argument. Um, so here I have C figure one and here's figure one in my paper. So that way they know which picture I'm referencing. Um, another thing that you're going to do as you're as I'm scrolling through when you're uh, listing different quotes there's different ways to do it. So right here um, in the sentence that I'm using here I don't introduce these authors Holman and Harmon up front and so because I don't tell you who I'm quoting, I have to put that in the in-text citation after the quote. Um, so I have my sentence here, I have my direct quote here, and then I have my parentheses, the page number, no comma in between them, um, and then the period notice comes after the citation, not before it. Otherwise this would just kind of be floating in space, and you might even get confused and think it was part of the next sentence. So make sure that that period comes after the citation. Um, if you look a little farther down, here I have another citation, but here I have introduced the author, Donald Pizer, I've introduced the source, I have my quote here, and then all I need to do is put the page number, again with the period after the parentheses. So if I go a little farther down, what I have right here is actually a block quote. If you include any quote that's longer than three lines in your paper, you need to um, set it apart, indent it like I have here, use it single spaced instead of double spaced like everything else, and instead of putting quotation marks, you actually leave off the quotation marks, and this is the one time when you're actually going to put the page number after the period. And that's what a block quote looks like. Um, scrolling down, ah, this is an example of what happens when you're quoting something, but it doesn't have an author. So if I don't have a specific author, that I'm associating with this, I just put um, the the title of what I'm quoting in quotation marks um, because it's not a whole book. If it was a whole book or a website, I'd put it in italics, and then the page number there. Um, if I go a little farther down, I'm trying to see if there's any other quotes I was going to talk about. I think we might just be going to the works cited page. Oh, there is one more. Um, in this case, I wanted to show you um, brackets. Um, you can use brackets and also ellipses. Sometimes when you are quoting from a source and you don't, uh, it, you can't uh, use the exact wording of that quote and it, to incorporate it into your sentence, it just wouldn't make sense if you just quoted it exactly as is. So in this case, um, my sentence is in his analysis of the Scarlet Plague, David Rainey observes that Granzer's family is living the myth of America, where, and that's the word where I, I've actually inserted the word where, so I have it in brackets, where a few hardy souls find themselves in a rough new world, 
and must test themselves against the land and each other, engineering a new society without the structures of the old. So you can see putting where in there just allows the sentence to flow a little bit better. So if you have to insert a word, you can do that. Another thing that you could do uh, potentially is if you were just using part of the quote and for some reason you wanted to leave out part of it, you could also put in three dots like that to show that I left out part of the quote but I'm continuing with the rest of it here. And that's another strategy that you can use. Alright, I'm just going to undo that. There we go. Um, now, going to the end, um, another thing that I have here um, is if you are quoting, if you have a quote that you've pulled from another source. So, uh, in this source that I was reading by Rainey, there were a lot of good quotes from other authors. And so, I'm using this quote from Charles Walcott that was quoted in Rainey. So, if you can use quotes that are included somewhere else, you just can attribute it to that original source. Or if you want to, you can look up, you know, Charles Walcott and quote directly from Charles Walcott. But sometimes it's hard to find that original source, so you can say quoted in if you need to. Last but not least, let's take a look down here at the Works Cited page. Again, notice that it's on its own page here at the end. Um, again, Works Cited is the title up here. Everything is still double spaced. Um, notice that there's a hanging indent, so it's really easy to see the last name. Here you'll notice that I have, uh, one of my sources is Jack London, and I have these dashes on these next sources. That just means that all of these sources are also from Jack London. So instead of typing London Jack over and over again, you can just see, oh, all of these sources are from the same guy. Um, and then looking down, you'll notice again, these are in alphabetical order, which makes it easier to find. This is a source that didn't have an author. So again, um, instead of starting with the author's last name, I start with the title, and that's in quotation marks. Um, and again, it's just in alphabetical order with the rest of them. You probably won't have as many sources as I do, because your paper is not as long as this one. But um, just keep in mind with MLA, to always remember at the end, to put the medium. So in this case I have print um, because this is from a print source, an actual book. If you're searching from the web, you'll have web and then after that you'll also have the date of access um, so they know how recently you found that. But that's a basic overview of MLA. I hope that's helpful to you. Again, remember to check the appendix in your book and Al Purdue if you have extra questions about um, using MLA format in a paper.